Hello, everyone. I'm quickly moving on to the video, and I'm ranking the romances in Baldur's Gate 3. Enjoy watching. Astarion's character arc takes a surprising turn in his romance, revealing hidden depths beyond the initial facade. Initially rooted in physicality, the relationship transforms into a poignant exploration of Astarion's emotions, trauma, and struggles with sexual coercion and PTSD. The romance unfolds early with high approval and a pivotal moment involving Astarion drinking from the player character. His initial proposition for sex, later revealed as a safety tactic, becomes a powerful symbol of his vulnerability. Pressuring him leads to a breakup, emphasizing the nuanced portrayal of his struggles with intimacy and disassociation. Critically praised for its resonance with real-life survivors of sexual assault, Asterion's arc offers a unique narrative of recovery and building new relationships. The portrayal goes beyond conventional storytelling, delving into the complexities of healing and personal growth. The outcome of Asterion's romance diverges based on whether he ascends or remains a vampire spawn. In Ascension, the player character's transformation into a vampire spawn triggers a loss of respect from Asterion viewing it as self-degradation. This sentiment carries into his actions as an ascended vampire, where he refers to the player as a pet. In contrast, the romance takes a different route if Astarian remains a vampire spawn, portraying a dynamic of equality between partners. As a result, I'm placing Astarion in the S tier. Gale, the Wizard of Waterdeep, harbors a profound loneliness inflicted by an orb nestled within his chest, while potential players may hesitate to explore romance with Gale due to the looming presence of his intimidating ex and concerns about unresolved feelings, he is genuinely eager to embrace new connections. Despite an amusing bug causing him to proposition almost every friendly player, Gale's romance unfolds as a charming and sweet journey. Remarkably, he stands out as the sole companion unruffled by the player's transformation into an illithid even expressing joy at the prospect of marrying them with his entire family in attendance. The path to romance with Gale intertwines with his personal quest revolving around the crown of Carsus and his evolving self-perception, contemplating whether to ascend to godhood. Unlike other romances with branching paths, Gale's unwavering love for his partner, regardless of their appearance, adds an endearing quality to his character making him a compelling choice for those seeking a steadfast and unconditional connection. As a result, I'm placing Gale in the B tier. In a groundbreaking move for romance and gaming, Halson, with his progressive views on love, embraces the concept of an open relationship with the player character, irrespective of their existing romantic ties. Polyamory, a rarely explored theme in media, including games, takes center stage with Halson's character. His inclusion marks a significant leap forward, emphasizing the importance of obtaining explicit consent from the player character's existing partner. Halson assumes an active role as a companion in Act 2, making it feasible to initiate a romantic connection with him only in Act 3. It's worth noting that Halson's romance arc is comparatively shorter and less intricate than those of other characters higher on the list. For an enriching experience, Players may consider engaging in a polyamorous romance involving Halson, along with the open-minded characters Shadowheart or Astarian, both of whom are receptive to such relationships. This venture into uncharted territory not only expands the narrative possibilities within the game, but also reflects a broader shift towards more inclusive storytelling in the realm of interactive entertainment. As players navigate the complexities of love and relationships, Halson's character stands as a testament to the evolving landscape of romance and gaming. As a result, I'm placing Halson in the C-tier. In the realm of captivating companions, Karlak stands out as a beloved figure, cherished for her infectious optimism and humor. Her narrative takes a unique turn, delving deep into her character rather than being overshadowed by external events, setting her apart from other romance options. The crux of Karlak's tale takes a poignant turn when she is confronted with a terminal diagnosis. Here, the player's role becomes pivotal as they have the opportunity to provide unwavering support and in a heartfelt conclusion, accompany Karlak back to Avernus to ensure her peaceful passing. Yet, alternate romance paths with Karlak 
take a more tragic route. In one scenario, the infernal engine within her chest becomes the harbinger of her demise. Another option places the player in the poignant shoes of companions in different romance arcs, transforming Carlock into a mind flayer. Faced with these grim choices, players must decide whether to terminate the romance or persevere, navigating the complexities of a relationship with Carlock as a mind flayer. In the delicate dance between love and adversity, Carlock's story weaves a one-of-a-kind tapestry, offering players a nuanced and emotionally charged narrative that lingers in the heart for far more than the fleeting moments of gameplay. As a result, I'm placing Carlock in the A tier. Baldur's Gate 3 introduces Lei Zell, a seemingly prickly warrior whose aggressive demeanor belies a compelling story of self-discovery. Her romance, initially challenging, evolves into a surprisingly tender narrative, reflecting loyalty and deep care for her partner. Embedded within the main plot, the Githyanki factions and their roles, including the exposure of Lockith's lies and the potential liberation of Orpheus, add thematic depth to Lysel's story. The historical conflict between Githyanki and Illithids resonates, leading to a poignant decision if the player becomes an Illithid. For Githyanki players, a unique path unfolds in Lysel's romance. The connection formed extends beyond conventional bonds, offering a distinctive narrative experience in the captivating world of Baldur's Gate 3. As a result, I'm placing Lazel in the A tier. Minthara stands as the sole recruitable drow in Baldur's Gate 3, offering players a distinctive perspective throughout the game. However, her recruitment comes at a cost, necessitating the destruction of the Emerald Grove. This decision, though, leads to the unfortunate consequence of losing other companions, merchants, and quest lines. Consequently, many players opt to forego Minthara and her potential romance. While her romantic storyline technically commences in Act 1, its true development unfolds much later in the game. This unique recruitment choice and delayed romance progression add layers of complexity to the gameplay experience, prompting players to carefully weigh the advantages of having Minthara on their team against the significant losses incurred by raising the Emerald Grove. In a world filled with tough decisions, Minthara's recruitment path stands out as a poignant example of the intricate moral dilemmas players face in Baldur's Gate 3. As a result, I'm placing Minthara in the C tier. In the ominous shadows of Act 3, the player's camp becomes an unexpected stage for a dark and consequential encounter. Mizora, the sinister overseer of Will's Pact, sets up an unsettling presence, culminating in a devilish proposition to the player. This brief but fateful moment shatters the romances between Will, Lazel, and Gale, leaving a palpable void in the camp's once harmonious atmosphere. The aftermath is a haunting tableau of severed connections, with even Carlock indirectly implicated, recoiling from the unforeseen consequences. The demon's proposition serves as a chilling reminder of the irreversible impact that forbidden choices can wield within the companion's dynamic. As Will, Lazel and Gale grapple with the aftermath, the camp echoes with the bitter realization that the pursuit of momentary desires has left indelible scars on their relationships. The camp, once a haven of camaraderie, now stands as a testament to the fragility of bonds and the profound repercussions that accompany the seduction of forbidden paths. As a result, I'm placing Mizora in the C tier. God's favorite princess takes center stage in Act Two tightly entangled with the main storyline's intricate threads. The choices made within her narrative arc wield immense influence over the world's fate and the trajectories of key NPCs, especially concerning Shadowheart's involvement in the astral prism theft, her allegiance to Shar, the ominous Shadow Curse, and the haunting Night Song. Those who opt to embark on a romance with the princess unlock a unique avenue, facilitating a smoother persuasion to spare the Night Song and break the shackles of the Shadow Curse, ensuring the safety of those seeking refuge in the Last Light Inn. Navigating the complexities of Shadowheart's familial bonds and the enigmatic Shar Cloister gains poignant significance within the context of a romantic entanglement. As a companion recurrently beckoning to join the party, Shadowheart plays a pivotal role in the main plot, with her evolving character and emotional growth intricately tied to the narrative's progression. The 
careful dance between love and loyalties takes center stage as players' decisions steer her toward a crucial crossroads, choosing between loyalty to Shar and allegiance to the player, adding a compelling layer of complexity to this captivating tale in Act 2. As a result, I'm placing Shadowheart in the S tier. In the depths of the player character's mind, the enigmatic dream visitor unveiled his true identity, none other than the cunning Illithid, the Emperor, formerly the famed adventurer Baldurin, founder of Baldur's Gate. A revelation shrouded in mystery, the Emperor's manipulative prowess unfolded, weaving a delicate dance within the recesses of the protagonist's consciousness. Yet, amid the ethereal encounter, a peculiar proposition emerged. The Emperor, despite his insidious nature, extended an offer of romantic entanglement to the open-minded and curious player character. A dream sequence unfolded, a surreal liaison transpiring in the realm of slumber. Curiously, this clandestine affair bore no consequences on the tapestry of existing romances within the party. However, an unforeseen twist awaited. The illithid tadpole-infected companions, unwitting witnesses to the dreamlike rendezvous, were revealed to have observed the entirety of the intimate interlude. In the wake of this surreal revelation, the party's dynamics shifted, an undercurrent of unease threading through their shared experiences. The Illithid's clandestine machinations had not only penetrated the depths of the player character's psyche, but had cast a subtle ripple across the interconnected minds of the party, leaving an indelible mark on their collective journey. As a result, I'm placing the Emperor in the C-tier. Baldur's Gate 3 introduces players to a classic fairy tale romance with Will, a character defined by his noble lineage and unwavering moral principles. As the protagonist, you play a pivotal role in helping Will reconcile with his father, navigating the complexities of his pact with Mizora, a decision that significantly shapes his destiny. Will's romantic arc stands out as one of the few in the game where marriage is proposed, featuring heartwarming scenes that add a touch of sweetness to the narrative. However, delving into Will's romance comes with the challenge of balancing his Blade of Frontiers reputation. Players must tread carefully, as decisions that compromise his esteemed image may impact the course of the relationship. Despite Will's emphasis on loyalty, the revelation of the protagonist becoming a mind flayer introduces a twist. Will suggests a clandestine existence outside of societal norms to sustain the relationship, a choice that may not resonate with every player. Nevertheless, staying true to Will's vision of romance and maintaining loyalty leads to a consistent ending, concluding this tale of love and valor in the world of Baldur's Gate 3. As a result, I'm placing Will in the B tier. The video ends here. In your opinion, what is the best romance in Baldur's Gate 3? Write in the comments and let's discuss. See you in another video. Don't forget to subscribe.